Hello, this is a technology and support presentation. Uh, it was created by myself, who is Eric Jesse, Samuel King, and Sean Leonard. Okay, the first slide is about major advancements in sport technology today. Obviously, the basketball shot clock was a big piece of technology that really has helped speed up the game of basketball. Um, back in the day, I mean, we even see this now in Iowa high school basketball. There's not a shot clock. It really slows the game down as a whole. Teams are bleeding a minute or even longer sometimes off a, off the, the shot clock or the, the clock in general, which is not very fun to watch. It's definitely increased the scoring, which overall is what we want to see as fans, and it's increased the overall – popularity of the sport just by the scoring itself the sport fu camera system which is uh, implemented in the nba the camera systems in general have really really taken off um, the nba sport vu camera system is a six camera system it helps capture speed distant player separation set plays passes and even more it's really kind of based on that analytic systems that we've talked about a lot and for how big analytics is today, especially in the NBA, it's no uh, question that this is a great piece of uh, technology to have. The in-helmet headsets in the NFL, this has transcended the game in a positive way for sure. Uh, back in the day, you know, in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, they had to run over to the sideline or bring uh, the play in with the player that was subbing in. It's really allowed plays to be called quick and easy, and it has increased the speed of the game as well. That's basically the technology in general has just increased the overall popularity and uh, the way that it's played. It's sped it up, made it more fan-friendly, and increased the fan experience. The Hawkeye machine in tennis is the last one that was a big major advance in sport technology. Its ability to get in and out calls correct. Uh, tennis players are able to challenge a call right then and there, and they can immediately see if it was in and out. It's pretty amazing, honestly, if you've ever been watching a tennis game. It just instantly pops up, and you can't believe that the calls just made that quickly. Our next slide, some more major advancements in sport technology. The goal line technology with the instant replay. This is big in the NFL, hockey, and soccer. Obviously, we want calls to be correct in our professional sports. We want a team that's supposed to win, not because of a blown call. We want them to win. Um, the only downfall is does it slow the game down too much? I've seen in hockey or in soccer, excuse me, the World Cup, they've used this type of technology. And it's honestly pretty quick. You just got to challenge it. And it shows it right then and there if the full ball was over the line or if any at all. The hands device is in NASCAR. It's, this is all about player safety and driver safety in this case. The head and neck support is obviously very important when you're going 100 plus miles an hour around a, a circle. Uh, it's installed in all cars now, and this was used after Dale Earnhardt's death, which has been essential in the player safety movement that we're wanting to see today. Lastly, the wearable technology. You know, this can be for anybody in sports, not just at the professional level. You know, we got the Fitbits, the Apple Watches and whatnot, but it has the ability to track sleep habits, the temperature, your heart rate, hydration, movement, and even more. It's been a total game changer in the improvement of all athletes. Um, it's doing the little things, you know, that athletes want to do that set themselves above the rest of the competition. And, and especially in the professional level, it's usually one or two plays that are uh, the difference in a game. Okay, some of the improvements that stadiums have made in general, the Wi-Fi access points, that's been huge, 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 huge. Obviously, Wi-Fi is a big part of our society today. And without Wi-Fi, a lot of people would be lost. And I know for one, I'm guilty when I'm watching a sporting event. I like to check Twitter and just see what some of the analysts and some of the other, you know, people within the organization say and are thinking during the game. So that's a, a way people can stay updated and use that. Um, the cashless technology, that's been huge. You know, some of the, like the phone services we use, Apple Pay, Venmo, Cash App, those are things that have transcended not just sports, but our society in general. Nobody really carries yeah, cash much anymore. And pretty soon, nobody's going to be carrying credit cards or any of that because you can just use your phone, which is going to be awesome. And then flat screens, TV, TVs, and 
stadium. That's been great too. Cause you know, at some point if a fan's drinking too much or doing whatever, he's, he's got to go to the bathroom at some point so he can still see the game and hear the game obviously cause he's there, but see the actual play that's making the fans that are watching the game go crazy. Premium, premium seating been great. Uh, costs a little bit extra, but some of those celebrities and other people are willing to pay it since it's obviously premium. Digital tickets this has been a huge game changer. Like I said, for the cashless technology, digital tickets are going to be pretty much all tickets fairly soon. It's just a ticket that's on your phone, and you can use it to scan and get into the game, and it makes it a lot easier not to lose. Bars, restaurants, and retail stores in stadiums. It's been a great idea. I know for a fact that I've been to Milwaukee Brewers ballpark and went to the bar before the game. That's right inside the stadium. It's nice because they even have some windows that you can look onto the stadium or the ballpark, excuse me. In restaurants, you know, everybody loves to eat and get some of those restaurants that are your favorite outside of the ballpark in the ballpark. And retail stores in the stadium, never a bad idea. Great way to get more revenue flowing in. That's obviously the goal. The goal of a of an organization is to get more revenue. Okay, the marketing, video, media, and TV contracts. This is blowing up anymore. The viewing experience will continue to change dramatically. We saw recently, you know, with the XFL, the experience they were trying to give the fans. The fan experience is basically what drives anything that happens on TV or in just sporting organizations in general there's so many different streaming platforms now anymore you know we got hulu youtube tv which i personally use love it it's got the most sports stations uh amazon apple tv twitter and even facebook facebook has started live streaming some games which is a great idea i'm sure sometime in the future we will see almost all games on facebook you just have to probably pay a subscription which isn't a terrible idea by any means um, you know, the more competition, obviously there's a lot of these puts some more money in play. Teams are willing to negotiate a little bit more with these platforms because they know, you know, Hey, I can, Amazon's offering me this and you guys want up them. And especially, you know, if you're a big market team, like for instance, the Chicago Cubs, that's something you have the ability to do, you know, and last and but, but not least more options for fans to watch games. Obviously we want more eyes on the product in general because that means more money coming in, obviously more interest, more people are going to buy merchandise, jerseys, whatever it is. Obviously the more eyes, the better. Okay. Our third venues, uh, you know, possible future of sports watching for sure. Alternative location for fans to watch the game. You know, if you can't make it to the game, can't afford it to afford to go to the game, you know, so many viewing parties, especially for like the World Cup or Super Bowls, viewing parties are a lot of fun for people. Uh, can't watch with a large group of your friends or other or with other fans. Uh, it's obviously way cheaper and can be a lot more family friendly. 3D screens, interactive tabletop technology, augmented reality, which we discussed in this course earlier, and that was a lot of fun to hear about. Uh, the bars, restaurants, movie theaters, and pavilions, just the technology for this type of venue is just really expanding. It's going to be a lot of fun to see how that continues to change the game in the future. Okay. The athlete, you know, they've been using social media to their advantage. Um, we see people promoting their image, you know, the more posts you make, usually the better people get to know you promote your own brand. You know, you can build a fan ba base this way, you know, highlight their overall potential, post some of their highlights, share their accomplishments, you know, MVPs, all-star games, connect with, you know, future coaches or employers. I'm sure a lot of those athletes are direct messaging or DMing each other and we don't even know about it. It also gives you a chance to establish integrity, you know, by posting the right thing. And a lot of people see, for instance, John Lester, for example, for the Chicago Cubs, he posts a lot of stuff about uh, pediatric cancer and just he connects with people that way. And that really builds integrity, I feel like. You know, it, you can review your content from others to protect public per perception. So, you know, before you post anything, obviously the athletes want to review it and make sure that they are posting the right things. Sponsorship and advertising. Teams and leagues are attracting sponsorship and advertising, highlighting a few different uh, aspects that have really 
with the technology blown up, analytics in general, the data analysis, multimedia vision, overall marketing performance, return on investment, transparency, real-time sponsorship, exchange, vision, technology improvements, and artificial intelligence growth. <clears throat> Excuse me. Teams and leagues, obviously, throughout the creation of technology and the overall improvement, it's helped create new audiences in ways that we could never even imagine. I always think of this example, the 1992 Olympics, the dream team. Before This was before technology was really hitting its stride where it is now. A lot of you know, people over in Barcelona and other people hadn't ever seen an NBA player before, you know, and we saw that impact here recently with all the foreign players that were superstars, Dirk Nowinski, uh, Giannis, obviously MVP last year. We were still seeing that impact, you know, and the, and the technology gives us more new opportunities. We can reach other markets with this. We can communicate with the fan base in general, which is key because as a fan myself, I know I want to see what, you know, if we're making a transition as a, as a team or what's happening, it has the ability to provide sponsors with access to the fan base. You can prom promote team events this way, get feedback from the fan base, grow market outside of metropolitan area. You can even help athletes manage public perceptions. Uh, and last but not least, sponsorship, advertising, and profitability. Obviously, as an athlete today, you have your own brand. And for how many sponsors they have, this is a great way to connect with some of those sponsors. Um, they see you posting great things on social media. They might be like, Hey, can you post this for us? And you know, that's just an easy way to how to get a sponsorship right there. Okay. The fan, obviously the fan interaction and just aspect in general has changed a lot compared to where it was before our technology started to blow up, but team and league websites build fan bases by utilizing, you know, their multimedia, their audio clips, video clips, podcasts, live games, team-related blogs, online communities, a virtual fan home, message boards, chat rooms, and online personal fan pages. Obviously, this stuff just promotes the interaction as a team with the fans, which is the fan experience is what we talk about all the time. So there's no question that this is very important. Okay, next, we got the eSports. That's been something that's really blown up here in the past couple years i think it's only going to continue to blow up uh you know it's organized and competitive video gaming for those that don't know that's what esports is uh, the events can be either online or in person the reason that some of this has blown up is because popular streaming services such as twitch and mixer have really pushed and promoted their live streamers and just anyone in general and that's got more attention than ever before in 2018, almost 400 million people actually viewed some sort of eSport. And obviously, the most popular areas for viewing of the eSport was in North America, China, and South Korea. Back when the eSports first started, there wasn't very many what they would consider an eSport, but now there's hundreds of games that are considered an eSport. Some of the most popular, it's Counter-Strike, Global Offensive, League of Legends, which is a great game, Fortnite. Dota 2, Call of Duty, and Overwatch. You know, and it's not stopping, like I said earlier. It's going to only continue to grow. People have more interest in it than ever before. And there's no sign of that slowing down. Technology, or excuse me, payments and ticketing. The trend in ticket sales have continued to change. Phones today are not just a phone. Most people don't even use their actual phone part of the phone. That makes sense. It's more so about the apps, uh, the texting, everything else. When it comes to sports, online ticket sales and apps have really taken off here in the past five to 10 years. We have so many StubHub, Vivid Seats, and SeatGeek. And one that I actually found interesting that I've never heard of was SweetHop, which is more for the uh, high spenders. But it's basically like StubHub, except for the, the suites that you can buy in arenas and stadiums. And any more teams are actually partnering, partnering with these apps. It's because they both have these like-minded goals where they want to make the arenas or stadiums full. And one of the recent trends that has started, has started to kind of kick off and is only going to continue to gain uh, steam, tickets are actually, some of them in some places are going to subscription. A lot of people 
young, then the younger generations really look for this. It's because it saves time and trips, which sounds bad, but our society wants to save as much time as possible and they don't like doing those little things anymore. It can reduce some of the costs and also the subscriptions can give you a variety. For instance, you might be sitting on the third baseline one game from the subscription, then in the outfield, then behind the plate, and then on the first base side of the dugout. And that just is nice because you don't always want to sit in the same spot compared to like season tickets. And then sometime in the near future, physical copies are probably going to be extinct. Last, lastly, the payments and purchasing is completely different. You can use Cash App, Venmo, and Apple Pay on some of these apps which I, for a fact, have used a few times. It's nice because then you don't have to worry about punching in a credit card. You can just sign into Venmo or Apple Pay, double-click your Apple phone, which is crazy, and it pays for it automatically. Companies and tech, tech, tech advancement of sport. Um, these are some of the biggest companies that have produced some of the big advancements in technology today, especially in sports. Uh, OmSignal. It's an apparel company that continuously tracks your biometrics. So kind of like your Fitbits, your Apple Watches, and some of those. It allows for a fitter, healthier, and even happier you. One of the ones that I found extremely interesting was actually PlaySight slash SmartCourt. Uh, Novak Djokovic, who's a great tennis player. I know I probably butchered his name, but I know he's a great tennis player. And Billie Jean King are two huge investors. Also another former great tennis player. And by using this, it can provide game management skills, 3D tactical information, and real-time stats. Obviously, it can help you improve mid-game. You can see what you're doing well, what you're doing poor, what you need to work on. And obviously, as technology continues to grow, that's what we really in the sport industry have been focusing on, is how can this piece of technology take my game to the next level. Another one is Zep Labs, Inc. This technology is actually swing data for all the sports that involve a swing, you know, baseball, golf, and tennis. This uh, organization uses 3D data that focuses on enhancing athlete, athletes' performance. It's gathered by an extreme amount of data from other baseball players, golf players, or tennis players. And it just tells you, you know, what they're doing and getting the results compared to maybe if your swing's a certain way, the results you will get. So it helps you improve your game overall as well. Then also there's been some sporting leagues that have really taken the forefront, um, taken the lead on technology and used it to their advantage. The NBA is obviously one that we always, we've been starting to hear about. It started with baseball, but now with the MLB, but the NBA has really taken a step forward and they've improved on it every single year. We hear all about analytics within the NBA and obviously esports as well. That one's probably a given just considering their sports are all based about technology. So it's going to just continue to improve after some of their esports. It tells you, it gives you a teammate grade or a grade that you can do to improve in the future. And those things are just nice to know what it comes down to. All this technology does is how you can be a better player, a better teammate, and hopefully win more games, which is ultimately the goal. Okay. And then the trends within broadcasting, globalization, and social media in sports. Broadcasting has really stepped it up here in the past few years. It's more interactive than it ever has been before. There's a lot more interviews with players and coaches. You know, there's analytic numbers on the broadcast anymore, which is insane. For instance, the NFL, if a field goal kicker is kicking a 50-yard field goal, it gives you the percentages of the chance that it will go in based on the wind, uh, the kicker's ability to kick on, you know, turf, grass, whatever surface they're playing on, and just their overall accuracy. And then also on broadcasting, touched on it a little earlier, but there's different camera angles and views than there ever have been in before. A big one is the goal line camera. You know, you can see right down the line and you can know the result before even the referees do sometimes. Globalization, obviously, been a huge part of the sport and its success. Streaming, more eyes on the product, obviously the better. Technology has made it a lot easier for globalization. Players are more popular than ever. And like I stated earlier, the 1992 Dream Team would kind of laugh at how easy it is now compared to where they set, set us up for. 
But technology with the streaming just made it unbelievable. Athletes are more popular than ever before, for sure. Uh, social media, it's a great tool for sports in general. You know, you can do a lot of different things. You can market yourself, market your team, market anything. If you're allowed to post highlights, if you have a sports center top 10 play, people can see it right away on Twitter or Facebook or anything else. The results is obviously important. So a lot of times uh, fans aren't sometimes able to see games and they can just check their Twitter feed, Facebook feed, or whatever it takes to see a result, see a certain scoring play or anything like that. And last but not least, it allows fans to just connect with the team. That's a huge aspect of today. Fans want that fan experience, and when you're able to connect with the player, you feel like they, you almost know them in a way, and you're just that much more likely to cheer for them because of this impact. Uh, thanks for watching the video. Hope you enjoyed it.